So before, when anyone would ask me, like, hey, do you have any siblings? And I'm like, yeah, I have a brother named Robert. And I'd quickly change the subject and say, oh, how about you? Do you have any siblings? And then focus the, quest the conversation in that direction. And I always felt uncomfortable or uneasy talking about him because I didn't really know what to say or think. And for most of you who've known me for the last 5, 10, even 20 years, you might have been like, hey, like, we never even knew you had a brother. And one day on Facebook, it's like loss of a loved one. And I didn't really know how to process the situation and everything that happened. And yeah, now just looking back, I feel like this is a good time. So just wanted to fill in that gap and share with you the amazing person that he is. Thank you. Robert and I are only one year apart and we grew up in the same households doing all the kids stuff like eating cereal and watching TV on Saturday morning like the Silver Surfer, Darkwing Duck with Mike Sobel and we played video games like N64, Super Mario, Zelda, Legend of the Ocarina, Banjo-Kazooie, Pogs. We had a really good childhood. We'd crack each other up all the time. Essentially, I was a big sister and he was my little brother. I would make sure he had lunch every day and I would wait for him after school to take the bus together. We get into arguments like who would have the better toys. I blamed, I'd break stuff and blame it on him. Right. My mom never believed me though. So anyways, but um, yeah, Robert, he loved dinosaurs and it's just like any other kid. However, when he walked, he just was a little bit slower than everybody else. And at the age of five, he was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a genetic condition which slows down your muscles for like your skeletal and your um, heart muscles. So over time, your muscles degenerate and uh, tighten up, right? So with that, when he would be sitting on the ground and get up, he'd be a little bit slower. When he walked, it was easy for him to fall. And even like picking up a jug of milk and trying to pour it, he wouldn't be, he'd like drop it because he wasn't, his hands weren't strong enough. And with muscular dystrophy, even though your muscles are slowly degenerating, your mental uh, development and capacity are still on par with everybody else your age. So that was really challenging because even though mentally he was aware of his life, just like everybody else and learning um, topics in school like everybody else, he would tell his muscles to do something like pick up a glass and he couldn't. That didn't really become real until he started using a wheelchair when he was about 12 years old. And at that time, uh, my parents were divorced since I was five. So it was just my mom who is shorter than me and weighs just over 100 pounds and myself taking care of Robert. And I didn't know what to expect. However, we, you know, we had like social workers come visit us to make sure we we're like ad adequately equipped to take care of him. And we had special equipment in the home to like lift him up and whichever and help him go to the bathroom easier. I didn't really know what our future was going to look like with taking care of Robert. And that changed when um, in 2000, in May 2001, there is a knock on our door and it was actually the social services workers with police officers and they were there to take Robert to live in a uh, healthcare facility or a foster home and all I remember doing was just going to my room, shutting the door and all I heard was uh, my mom yelling and people struggling to hold my mom down and then eventually take Robert out of a home to um, live in a place where he would have the care that he deserved and he required. And after that, like, I pretty much just shut that part of my life out. I just went to school the next day, like everything was normal and just never talked about it. And my mom and I, we just separated in a sense of like we lived in the same home, but we would never talk. And she would, I just see her being angry and yelling all the time. 
And um, I remember just, she'd yell, I go to my room, turn on the radio. Two hours later, I turn off the radio. I'm like, oh, whoa, she's, she's still yelling. And that was just normal. And we never really talked about anything. We never really resolved anything. It was just constant yelling. And that was just, that was just our home life. So during that time, Robert moved from several group homes, long-term care facilities, and finally landed in a foster family, and they were the best thing that ever happened for Robert. They were such a loving and full family with pets, so much happiness and so much joy, and they took care of Robert as if he was their own son, and I'm so grateful for them to this day, and I truly feel that they saved Robert's life didn't really know what to think about Robert and I'm sure my mom tried to visit him but she couldn't and it was just a lot of emotional upset on Robert's side and my side and yeah not not a good topic to bring up and because I didn't know how to talk about it but at that time it was just easier not to talk about it so that's what I did for pretty much 10 years and it was until like 2010 where I got a call where um, Robert was moving to a different foster home and he's like, he wants to see us. I was like, okay, this is great. And that, it was a little bit awkward at first because I didn't know what to do or didn't know what to say. And it was just really challenging because there's still a lot of like anger and upset in my life. and. Then, and then I remember in 2011, I got a call from his foster mom saying, Robert's going into the hospital for surgery. He actually needs a rod to be put into his back to help him sit up straight. And with that, they didn't know if he was going to make it. I was at work that afternoon. And I just immediately burst into tears. I'm like, okay, I got to make my way to Edmonton. I was able to visit him in the emergency room. And I was like, I knew I had to start building up my relationship with Robert again. And the first thing I did was I went to go buy him an iPad because that's what love is, right? You just buy gifts for people. <laughs> I didn't know any better, but he, he used it. He liked it. But um, ultimately, it was a time that we spent together, which was so valuable, right? Like, uh, I started seeing him a little bit in 2010, maybe a handful of times in 2011. But it wasn't until later in 2013 when I moved back to Edmonton that I saw him consistently at least once or twice a month, like for a full day, we go to the movies, go to like go out for eating or whichever. And it was such a good time just to know Robert as a person. And things were a little bit different because he lost pretty much most of his ability. He was at a point of being a quadriplegic and his movement abilities were very minimal. Like in his hands, he could only move them for his a wheelchair joystick right so hanging out with him meant like I had to feed him and I just learned to adapt with his requirements right so feeding him even taking him to the bathroom and at first it was awkward however I knew that um, he was hey he just like let go of every he's like you know what this is just life you know just help me and you you just love your family and you do what you gotta do right and after that, I just got used to it. It was just normal and taking the bus or even going uh, down White Ave together. And a huge thing I learned about Robert is patience. Like uh, we'd be going down White Ave and some of the sidewalks were uneven. So if his hands on the joystick and it like fall off a little bit just because of the sidewalk, well, then his hand would be shifted so he need his hand to be put back onto the joystick so he can make those movements for his wheelchair and his wheelchair joystick was so sensitive like um that the slightest movement can move him forward right so i remember one one time it took us honestly 20 minutes to go from one block end of a block to another block just in a straight line just because his moving his his hand right so i had to really learn to slow down and just be with the situation right and that is a different thing for me because I like to keep busy. And but however, being with Robert, he's like, slow down, Kathy. And I've actually had messages and dreams from him. He's like, Kathy, slow down. <laughs> and that's where I've learned so much patience with Robert. And even with his painting, and I'm gonna just put um, a video footage of him painting. He loves painting. He's such an artist. He's so creative. Even with his limited movement, he's able to create 
these amazing images and how he does it is he'll have he'll be holding his paintbrush and then the canvas will be right below him on a board and his uh, healthcare worker or his uh, volunteer aide would be moving the board for him to make the strokes and it's so incredible and I can't just creates such amazing artwork and he's always loved drawing he's so good at it right and um, with that Robert had to learn how to let go you know like letting go of control letting go of privacy letting go of the past right because when you're uh, uh, when you have a condition that's progressed to that level <laughs> You have to wait for other people to feed you. You have to wait for other people to arrive. You just have to be patient. You can't go out there and be like, make things happen. You just have to allow it. And he just accepted his situation. I know he was angry before. However, he learned that there's no point in being angry over something you can't control. And it wasn't like he accepted defeat. He was like, okay, this is my situation. I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna control what I can control. And that's how he was able just to be patient and peaceful in any situation. And he's just so funny, like uh, he has this like quirky attitude and qu quirky humor too. Like uh, there is this like Nerf dart gun that was connected to his computer. And as um, people would come in and help him, he would just like click on his mouse. So then the derf Nerf gun would like shoot little darts at people, right? But um, yeah. Oh, Robert, I love you. But uh, yeah, letting go, letting go of the past. Like I know he was upset at my dad. He was upset at a lot of things. However, he forgave my mom, he forgave me, but um, with that, some parts, he had to tell me to forgive my mom because there's sometimes I would get really upset at my mom, like she'd do or say something embarrassing. He's like, no, there's no point. That's just how she is. I remember this one time, we are at a Horlock Park in Edmonton for our outdoor picnic. And we got there a little bit early, so we got a table and it was a nice gazebo area. However, about 20 minutes later, this group of people came by and they're like, oh, actually we reserved these tables. Like, look, we have the reservation. And my mom's like, no, I don't believe you. Um, we got here first, these are our tables. And I was like, oh my God, mom, this is so embarrassing. And then there's other tables available, like a couple meters away. So we started like bringing things over. However, my mom just had to like, sit in the original table and I got really angry and my brother was just like Kathy forgive her and it took me a while but he's like forgive her and it ended up being like my mom just sitting there arguing with them and then Chris and I and like our other friends and Robert were like at the other table continuing our barbecue but um Robert was just like so good at forgiving and he's like any pain from the past he just let it go so he's such a bigger person than I am and I'm just learning that level of forgiveness and with that for someone with his conditions they have a life expectancy of late teens to early 20s however Robert lived until he is 29 and I'm really glad he did because then in those last couple of years we're able to have spent time together, have fun, crack jokes like we used to. We just appreciate each other. I think that was the biggest one. But um, I'm sorry for all of you who I've never really talked about it to. And even when I did, I just burst out into tears and I know it was just hard to just talk about. However, right now I feel like it's a good time and you never know life just happens and just allowing and appreciating the person makes such a big difference so I forgive myself for being not being the sister i thought i wanted to be that's a big one I forgive my mom for not being the responsible mom she should have been i put that expectation on her 
for everything that happened. Just allowing the situation to be, and it was better this way that Robert lived in the foster care. And I'm glad that we're able to connect again after almost 10 years and spend the last couple of years together. Robert did have some hardships moving from foster home to care facilities. However, I want to share with you the person he is today. Thank you for allowing me to share the incredible person Robert is beyond his circumstances. Thank you. Obviously, I do like Wolverine. 